Hi everyone. So excited to be joining you here today. We're going to be talking with Tara Schuster. And she will be joining us in just a second. You guys hanging in there? All right, here comes Tara. Hi! Hi! Hi. Oh, we did it! Yay! How are you? I'm great. How are you? Wonderful. I'm so happy to meet you. Oh, man, I'm so happy to meet you. This has been like an internet crush, stalking, <laughs> talking over the IG. Now it we're making it happen. hundred percent has. <laughs> and then I read your book and I'm like, wait, have you been reading all of my journals? Because I feel like, <laughs> I feel like you're spying on me. <laughs> I'm in your brain. I'm yes, you there. are. <laughs> How have you been faring? How was it to release a book? right before 2020 i mean yeah <laughs> well it wasn't <laughs> ideal let no. me tell you something if you spend you know arguably 35 years working on something you don't want to launch it in a pandemic no. um but it actually like i couldn't have predicted it but it came out at just the right time because i feel mm. like it was useful and it's been helpful to people um and also the book is sold at target and like Target was basically the only bookstore open for a while. Oh, yeah. So it had this weird, I don't know, it was, I was grateful to be able to be with people when they needed a friend and, yeah. you know, a socially distanced friend yeah. in the form of a book. Well, I, I honestly, I don't even know how I got into you, but I just stumbled upon you probably by way of, you know, just scrolling or by, you know, connecting the dots with people, but I immediately fell in love with you. And then I read your book <laughs> and it was right at the beginning of when I had launched my book club, my read with Jules book oh, club. Awesome. And we have over 300 members now and wow. it's so fun. But then once the pandemic hit, I thought, Oh my God, this is such the perfect book because I needed something bright. So I yeah. picked it up and I'm thinking, okay, this will help motivate me to take care of myself while still managing this collective grief that yeah. were of, of COVID and lost lives and lost jobs and yeah. lost relationships. But what I found astounding is that um, the pandemic for me, at least has had this very natural sifting in my yes. own life. Mm -hmm. Like what really matters has really come to the forefront mm -hmm. and what will I be left with? You know, because yeah. all of these superfluary things have, yeah. have, been eradicated and yeah. what's important to me and what relationships am I better with? Yeah. And then what relationships am I better without? So I, I felt like after having read it, I was like, we have to read this in my book club because it felt like the guide and the aid that I needed while already walking through this very, albeit, you know, traumatic, but yeah. sifting of sorts that we've been facing collectively. Well, thank you for letting me know. I mean, that's definitely, I obviously couldn't have timed it and wouldn't have wanted it to be this way, mm -hmm. but I am really grateful to be able to give people advice in this time because the book is all free stuff. It's basically all free that right. you can do to work on your soul. Cause right. that's what we're talking about at the end of the day is like, who the fuck are you? Mm -hmm. how, how do you want to show up? Like, right. how do you want to show up in this world? And I think what you were saying, I've started calling the time before COVID peak frivolity. It was okay. like the peak frivolousness. Like my yes. biggest, like one of my biggest concerns was wondering if I should get eyelash extensions or not. Right. Like every day I was like, do I need those? Like, <laughs> I love it. Women look so good with those. Should I get those? And then it was like, do I have toilet paper? Do mm -hmm. I have beans? Like, who, who are my friends? Like, who am I willing to risk taking a walk mm. with? I mean, I think in some ways, a, a thing that I've been talking a lot about is who do you want to walk out of this pandemic as? Mm. What do you want to be on the other side? Mm. Because yes, there's tremendous loss. Yes, there's tremendous grief. And this is our life. Right. Right now. Like, 
if you don't take advantage of it, I don't know what to tell you, you know, that, and, and for some people it's impossible. They're, you know, working at the front lines, they're doing the actual work of saving people. So we also mm -hmm. have to give ourselves some grace that like, right. we can't all be self-improving in the pandemic. Like mm -hmm. I get jealous of people who started baking bread. I'm like, yeah. how did you do that? <laughs> like, how did you know what starter was? I, I'm very confused. I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> yeah, starter. If anyone right. knows. I don't even know. Yeah. yeah, I think you're so right that like we've been forced to come face to face with ourselves. The mirror that we've wanted to avoid for so long yes. that we've been able to avoid because of our busyness is yes. just staring at us right in the face. And I yes. have to tell you something funny. Like this morning, I was lying in bed, butt ass naked <laughs> because you needed nice. that visual. And, <laughs> and, I was lamenting about my, I mean, I live a very privileged life and I'm still like lamenting yeah. about my life and going yeah. and thinking about what I've lost and where am I going from here? And where are we going from here? You know? Yeah. And so that's I was like, still Dual. real. It by is the way. so real. It, that's still, you know, I'm in a very privileged position um, mm -hmm. where I'm safe. I've got money in the bank, food on the table. I don't have mm -hmm. COVID and I'm bummed out that the dress I bought for my book launch party is still hanging in my closet with its tag on. Right. I'm bummed out at all the things I missed out on and grateful for my health. Like mm -hmm. the ability for, for us to get comfortable with two opposite things being true at the same time, the sooner you can do that, mm -hmm. the more enjoyable you find your entire life. Yes. Yes. I love how you said it. I, um, so I pulled up my notes to, mm -hmm. and of course you like kicked me swiftly in the ass while I'm like <laughs> whining about my life. And you say, um, you're talking about your desk mm. and how you carve out actual space for inspiration. Yeah. Um, and you say, I didn't quit my job, take off to the countryside where I could concentrate and up into my life so I could write. <laughs> I created a small spot where it felt safe, gleeful, and totally okay to create in. Then I set a timer every morning before work and did the damn thing I wanted to do. Yes. You can do one little thing today that moves you toward yeah. your dreams. Not in three years when you were more financially stable, not in five years when you have your shit together more. And it was so timely for me as I'm like whining in bed, which yes, it, it, is, it is real, but at the same time, it's real for all of us. Yeah. And so there, there is this um, perseverance and determination that I think you do such a beautiful job of, of encouraging us, like to be in the very, the very present moment. Your first yeah. chapter is like the worst beginning or something like that. I don't remember what the, the, the oh, name start, of um, Be the best of the worst. Yeah, the be the best of the worst. Like start where you are. Yeah, start, start where, where you, you are. are. Yeah. So for you, um, like, how have you maintained determination, perseverance, creativity during this mm -hmm. time personally? It's such a good question. And I'm so grateful you asked it because I want to dispel so many creativity myths. Mm -hmm. Like, if I thought I needed to be, like, inspired and, like, some heavenly voice tell me what to do, I would yeah. never write. Nothing would yeah. ever get done. If I yeah. thought I need to be somewhere else more conducive to creativity literally nothing would ever get done because like I'm not gonna quit my job like yes. how how do you like I got bills to pay like how do you do that um mm -hmm. so instead even in this time I still set a timer every morning and and I've actually moved into now I can be creative full-time which is like mm -hmm. an amazing change wow. and I still do the same thing I still set the timer in the morning I show up to the page because I respect myself enough mm. to do the damn thing that I like to do. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's the thing is like writing creativity. It's all just practice. It's not like some magical thing that's gifted to a few lucky people. Right. All of us can do it. Literally all of us can do it. We just have to take the time to do it and to practice doing it mm -hmm. and to find a way that um like a process we like so i'm really yes. process oriented like i journal as a way to get my mind loose then i set the timer for the hour 
um, okay. and, 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 this, and when I'm done with the hour, I am free. I am free to leave um, the desk. Like, I don't let it mm -hmm. lord over me all day. And I, I think that's right. important. Yeah, you talk about in your book, you mentioned the artist way. Oh, my and God. It's sitting, I'm, I'm reading. I have mine behind way. me. <laughs> it's like that book changed my life. That's one yes. of my Bibles. It's like, I was just, yes. I was looking at it. I'm working on another project. Okay. And I needed a little inspiration. So I was looking over it and it's like, you can see different color pen marks from different years. Oh, that, wow. Like that's how many times I've done it. So now I start oh, writing the goodness. year in the margin. Okay. And do you still do like your morning pages in the yes. morning? Yes. I've been doing, I've been doing morning pages for 10 years and a gratitude yes. list for 10 years. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about yeah. your, your take on gratitude because I do think that inspiration and gratitude, they kind of walk hand in hand yeah. with one another. Totally. They're sort of symbiotic in a way. Yeah. Um, I was you're talking open. You're, you're open yeah. and you're noticing, you're noticing things. And also like the other day I was feeling a little bit uninspired and my friend said, well, what are you grateful for? I said, fruits uh, and trees like that. Yeah. And he immediately was like, you need to lean into what you're grateful for because it's, you're grateful for it because it gives you life. And when you have life, then you find your inspiration. Yes. Like writing all these things. People often say to me, oh, you have such discipline. And, and Julia Cameron writes about this, like such discipline to sit down and write every day. I'm like, I am not that disciplined. Like mm -hmm. I will eat an old cookie just because I found it in the cupboard. <laughs> like it's stale, it's disgusting, but it's there. Discipline's yeah. not something I have a lot of. I have a lot of enthusiasm. Right. I find joy. I like to write. I found a thing I like to do. Yes. So when I tap into that and feel grateful, and I think what you're saying about gratitude, I am grateful for clean water. I am grateful mm. for a well-made bed. I am grateful to walk outside. Like think about all the mass loss. If you mm. can be on your fucking legs right now, yeah. if you're able to walk, it means you are not underground. Mm. Ha! I am <laughs> grateful for that. Right. And that place from that gratitude place. I think that's a really great point that if you're stuck and you know, we all get stuck um, creating if you're stuck, mm. whip out a gratitude list. I mean, yes. I, it's like nature Xanax. It just has mm. a way of like calming the mind. Yes. Oh my goodness. I think you're so right. And you also talk about um, time alone and yeah. you, you said this hysterical thing and I wrote it down on my notes because I feel like I have all the time in the world right now, which means yeah. I am horribly unproductive because I'm very uh, productive when I have very little time. And so I am the same way. Subsequently, I get half of anything else I would have gotten done, but yeah. in double the time, oddly. Yeah. But I love how you say, I know that your life is very full and you have a lot going on, but you don't have more on your plate than Gandhi did, my love. <laughs> <laughs> but you're talking about like the, the need for this time for yourself to invest yeah. back into yeah. your, your own soul, like you said. Yeah. Like self-care can sound cheesy and somewhat yeah. right. Yeah. But it's really the care of the soul, the management and the, the tenderness of the soul. Yeah, it's funny, like, you know, I've heard people say self care is self indulgent. And, you know, it's typically like commodified. So people are mm -hmm. trying to sell like vacations, try this sheet mask, like self care mm -hmm. is taking yourself to brunch. Right. And brunch is nice. A mm -hmm. face mask is nice. If you've got a ticket to Tulum, I'll take it once it's right. all over. Like, I'm not saying no. <laughs> I'm, I'm right. just to be clear, I'm saying yes. But it I'll is. Go. <laughs> yeah, I'll go. But it isn't self care. So right. Self care is simply recognizing and allowing yourself mm. to have emotional wounds. So instead mm. of like drowning them in alcohol or ice cream or whatever your crutch is, recognizing, oh, that's something I need to work on. And then mm. nurturing yourself through it instead of beating yourself up. And yeah. I think if that's self-indulgent, if we live in a culture where that is self-indulgent, mm -hmm. I'm out. Peace yeah. out. I don't need it here. I don't want to be here. Right. Because it's really like, what is it to be a human? Mm -hmm. and, and once we really take care of ourselves in that deeply authentic way, we are better community members. 
Yes. You, you don't hate on people if you love yourself. You, yes. you are not mean and stingy. You are generous because you see there's such an abundance. Mm. So if you want to change the world, I suggest, I humbly suggest mm. you begin with yourself. And you begin with your relationship with yourself. And I could go on a whole other, I've, I've been investigating my relationship with God um, mm -hmm. through the pandemic. So I could go on a whole other tangent about that. <laughs> but when I tap into that of like, I am good to myself and thus I'm good to my community. Right. There's just such a joy in it. Yes. And, and it gives me more energy and enthusiasm to continue so that it's not just like pushing a boulder up a hill. It like feels good. Right. Okay. But let's talk about right now though, because I feel like, I feel like right now in our climate of our nation, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we are being inundated with shame as mm -hmm. a method for change. And you use the word change. Like if oh. we can change ourselves, you know, then maybe we can change the world. If we can care for our souls, then we can better care for one another. And so, and you talk about shame because you experienced it in a very unfortunate and appropriate way as a methodology, as a child, you know. Yeah in your rearing. And um, so you've experienced, you've experienced the trauma of shame being used as a method for change. Yes. Personally. Right. Now I am feeling as if in our current climate that because we're not listening to one another mm -hmm. and not recognizing the pain of one another, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. people are resorting to shame. The shame, like to public as shaming. Is that what you're public, talking about? Yeah. Public shaming and just and on social media and yeah. like, you know, yeah. you're crazy if you this, or you're crazy if you're, you know, there's yeah. like this, this narrative that's so shame filled. Yeah. When, um, so speak to that. Like, how do you yeah. think that we can combat this influx of shame that yeah. I feel like we're receiving? Yeah. Well, I think it's sort of about knowing the difference between like what is healthy shame and what is completely inappropriate um minimizing somebody's shame because mm. i do think you know why does shame come up if if you um rob somebody and you're found out i should hope that you feel ashamed that's a right. natural way of saying like oh that was wrong what i did mm. what i committed was wrong mm. um if we're using shame to to push people out. Like I recently heard a, um, a term, instead of calling people out, can you call people in? Hmm. Can you call people in so that we can have a discussion about something? Right. And, and honestly, to take it a little less personally sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure I am, um, you know, I know that my whole life will be spent being anti-racist and I'm, you know, like to take one thing from this year that's been right. so prevalent. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect. I'm going to mm -hmm. screw it up. That's okay. My feelings, I'm going to survive that. But what I can't, yes. but there's certain people who are not going to survive losing their lives. Mm -hmm. So it's also like perspective, like me sometimes feeling a little uncomfortable, a little ashamed of how I've acted in the past. Mm -hmm. Isn't that bad? Like right. we need to get over needing to be good. Like we mm -hmm. don't always need to have been good and perfect in our lives. The question is, are you learning? Are you right. walking forward? Like, right. where are you now? Um, mm -hmm. And then also just not calling out people, like not assuming the worst. I don't <laughs> assume the worst about people. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't have it in me to, to just assume that other people are so bad because I don't want them to assume that about me. Um, right. So I think thinking through like this, nobody ever is like, you know what I want to do today? my worst. I want to give the world <laughs> my worst. It, you know, they're thinking about it from their own perspective and they think they're giving their best. So like, can you have empathy for that? That, that right. that's the best they think they can do? Like, mm -hmm. oh, interesting. I wonder what it's like to be them. I wonder what would happen if I walked in their shoes. So yeah, yeah that's, I, I think for all the un discomfort of the past year, I mm -hmm. think it's going to put us way on a different level. I think mm -hmm. some of this stuff we needed to have this really painful moment so that we can rise Phoenix like from the yes. ashes. Yes. And I think you said something so important that none of us start 
start off at the end. We start yeah. where we are. Yeah. And as long as we are on the journey to understand yeah. one another rather than yeah. be right, as long as we're on the journey to yes. to listen with our yeah. ears wide open and to give one another the benefit of the doubt, to not be so threatened by people saying, I'm hurt by this. Yes, yes. You know? I, and exactly. I, you know, I actually, somebody telling you that they are hurt by something you did is such a beautiful thing because it means they trust you. Yes. They trust oh, you that's enough. Good. Yes. They trust, and they love you enough that they didn't just write you off. They told mm -hmm. you how they feel. And instead of getting threatened, what you could do is pause to, to, to um, you saying you were just talking about it, tap into your gratitude. Yes. Oh, I'm thankful that they told me this, that gives us both an opportunity here. Mm -hmm. And to not be so concerned with being right. I don't know why being right is such a big deal. Like, I'd rather. I don't know. I'm kind of over wrong. it too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, kind of over it because that and, that assumes that we figured it out. And yes, like, what I love is the mystery. I love the mystery and the curiosity yes. of other people and of you know faith journeys. I said this the other day to a friend. I was like, I literally think that the most boring boring thing is what somebody believes spiritually. Yeah. Like, I don't care to know that. That's but that's you. You know, yeah, that's, that's who you right. are and what you believe. Like. Yeah. Let's seek to understand one another yeah. and yeah. to love each other without yeah. having to like clamor through, you know, figuring out how we perfectly match up. And to be curious about it all. You know, I think the one thing um, that kind of got me through my childhood and, and sort of some of the darker things mm -hmm. was two things. It was a curiosity about what else could it be like? What else mm -hmm. could this world be like? What could I try? Um, and then I, just a little bit of hope, like a little, mm -hmm. like a little bit, like you don't need to have all the hope, but if you have a little hope that your life can be better, yes. that opens up all kinds of doors because you can just imagine that, oh, maybe, and then you start walking in that direction. Yes. Um, but yeah, I agree. It's like, there's a certain openness that's needed right now. Hope is such a, powerful language it, yeah. it's almost like the thing I kind of want to wh whisper it's like the coin that you throw in the wishing well and you don't really know what's going to come of it yeah but um I have to tell you that like when when me when I was going through your book with these women um we challenged one another to take two weeks and commit to something Ooh, with, I the love hope, that. with the idea that perhaps something could be better you know, that perhaps we could change this thing. Maybe I do, maybe I am autonomous. Maybe I do have the sovereignty to be yes. able to decide with my life. Yes. What I want it to look like. Yes. And so we took these two weeks and I took two weeks off of no drinking. Okay. All. And there were a few other women that did the same thing. Other women, um, took a couple of weeks and committed to journaling every day or to working uh -huh. out every day or to cutting out, you know, some sort of, um, something that they needed to cut out in their, in their diet. Yeah. And it was so wonderful. Number one, so empowering to do yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I met, I, I, uh, failed like three, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, it's human, <laughs> it's yeah. life, but it was so amazing and so hope filled to be yeah. able to, talk to them every week and say, how did it go? And one girl in particular, I'll never forget it. She said, I feel like when I don't drink that I am more authentically who I am. I, I mean, I, so right now I have not been drinking for the past month. I'm, mm -hmm. I just decided, at, I mean, like so many people in January, I was just like, I don't need to drink. Yeah. And um, my friend Holly Whitaker wrote this book, Quit Like a Woman, that's been really huge. It's so good. It's so good. And, it's and so I, good. Like before the reason, um, when I read her book, one, one thing I had never considered was that there's a whole industry selling us booze. That, that it's that people make money. Like, yeah, I knew that, but I didn't really think about it. Like, oh, I'm a user of alcohol. Like, at the end of this bottle, somebody's making money. And mm -hmm. they want me to keep drinking. They want me to mm -hmm. keep consuming the product. That's probably not great. 
Right. And so I don't know where I'm going to end up on this. Like, I doubt it that it's going to be like 100% I'm a sober person. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm enjoying this time. I, I, I haven't missed anything. I'm like, oh, so I'm never hungover? Cool. <laughs> like, I can do anything in the morning and I can wake up way earlier than I thought I could? Cool. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It's so true. I started thinking about it because I'm re reading her book right now. Yeah. I started thinking about how like backwards it is when I will get praised for drinking bourbon because I uh, like the flavor of bourbon. Yeah. And a guy will be like, oh, that's, that's super hot. sexy. Yeah. And I'm like, why is this sexy? And then all of a yeah. sudden it's like drinking bourbon became a way for me to prove my femininity. Yeah. You know? And I'm yeah. like, what is this thing? Like, I love ridding yeah. ourselves of, of vices and of things and of relationships that kind of steal our identity and we're able to see ourselves for who we truly are. Yes. Yes. And we have to ask, does this serve me? Mm -hmm. You know, cause like one thing I write about in the book is if you're saying in, in my book is, is if you're saying I deserve this drink. I had a hard week. I deserve this rosé. I had a tough day. I deserve these cupcakes. Mm -hmm. Probably a warning sign that mm. that's the exact substance you shouldn't be turning to because it's it's getting you out of touch with what you're actually experiencing. It's an emotion. Yes. It's, it's a crutch that can never actually help you because it doesn't actually address the real thing. Mm. So if you can step into what's the real thing, why am I so upset with my boss? Why was this week so hard? You know, and, and, and one thing with the pandemic that I really have noticed is my friends who are overwhelmed by their lives, who are kind of like, they're pushing and going and, and everything, they like need escapes. And since yeah, so many yeah. of their escapes have been taken away, they're like going crazy. Like, mm -hmm. I can't go on vacation. I can't go to a bar. I can't, you know, so... But I'm like, hey, did you, have you investigated that you have created a life you need to escape from? Yes. Oh, like, yes. Why, why are you, you're an escape artist from your life? Like, right. What, well, let's look at the life. And, right. and when you look at the life, and what I hope people take from the book is that I'm not saying you need to move to the country. I'm not saying you need mm. to get divorced. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying mm -hmm. is you need to take an honest accounting of where you are. Just yes. look, just see, here's where I'm at. And most of the time it's actually pretty small habits, pretty small adjustments that when you do it regularly, like when you make them habits mm -hmm. can change your life. They can be just as powerful as moving to a different country. Yes. But the first step is always self-awareness is like, why am I escaping from my life? What right. have I built for myself? Oh my goodness. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. Cause you're right. We just, we create this, this fluster yeah. in, in an effort to just avoid, to yeah. avoid what is actually true self care. Like yeah. self care itself can even be a band aid to true self care. Yes. You know, yes. we can glass of wine, self care, get our nails done, self care, but that's not self care. But self care is soul work. It is like the down and dirty soul work yes. that you address in your book for those yes. of us who are asking, buy yourself the fucking lilies with Tara yeah. Schuster right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's, yeah, I, ca I call it soul, soul work. Mm -hmm. um, in my next project, that's a lot more of the journey I've been on is how do you take the book and internalize it so that it is yes. within your soul? Because that's where I've sort of been after writing that book. Mm -hmm. And it is authentic self-care is dealing with your life as it actually is. Yes. Which is also to me the ultimate mark of wisdom and maturity is like, what is my life actually? And how do I want my life actually to be? And am I willing to reconcile what it is with what I want it to be? Am yes. I, because you know what? Not that many people are. People, I was talking to my therapist about this, about like, you know, everybody says they want to change, but they actually don't because they've gotten comfortable with things that are really uncomfortable and yeah. feeling bad feels familiar. And we hang on to the things that feel familiar. 
-hmm. So I'm asking people, can you step out of your comfort zone with me? Like I'm fucking, I'm doing it. Like I I don't know all the answers, but I know how to step out. Will you step Mm -hmm. out with me and we can try some of these little things. And I'm not saying you have to do this forever. I'm just asking, can you step out for a second? Yeah. Can you see what it would be like for a second if you weren't escaping from your life? That just takes so much courage. We all yeah. have it. We and all we do. have that courage. We all, but to your point, but we've got to do the soul work. We've got to take ourselves seriously. I mean, yeah, you, said, yeah. um, you said on your Instagram the other day, I'm going to read it. I think the, you said, I think the most powerful people want us to feel small. Mm. And like, we can't have power. That way we don't ask for it. We give up before we try. I now know that there is a life-giving energy in trying. Your voice is a muscle. You have to exercise it if you want to use it. Oh my goodness. And I know that you were talking about, um, I I believe you went to a Black Lives Matter rally. It was something political. Yeah, it was something political. However, I, I think that as much as it applies there, it also applies just in every other arena of our lives that yeah, it, we have to exercise it. We have to yeah. exercise our courage in order for it to stay strong, in order for yeah. us to be imaginative, and in order for us to try. To, to know that we have it. I, I, yes. I, I last night was talking to another book club and somebody asked me, you know, they're like, how do you get over imposter syndrome? How do you become mm-hmm. more confident? Like, I don't have that confident voice that you have. You, and mm-hmm. she was talking about, I have a chapter called um, The Frenemy Within. And it's yes. like how to work through your inner frenemy. And I said, because you're saying that, that's why you don't have that voice. Because mm-hmm. you're not even willing to try. And so you're uh. telling that confident voice, shut up. There's no place for you at this table. Right. What if instead you invited it? If you started saying, just even faking that you're confident, just mm-hmm. working the muscle because, you know, that post, um, I, I did a lot of, um, I did ballot curing and voter rights um, in oh, Arizona awesome. for, this, for this past election. And the number of young women who said to me, my vote doesn't matter, mm-hmm. was terrifying and, and sad. And I don't care what side of politics anyone's in. We have got to think, at, at a minimum, I know everybody's vote counts. Everybody's voice matters. Yes. And, and I think it's the super powerful that want us to feel small. They want right. to control us. It's the alcohol industry. It's these super PACs and big corporations. Mm-hmm. who They have like money interests in making us feel like we have no power. So right. it's it's political. It's emotional. It's people in the world want to make us feel small Mm -hmm. I'm saying no no thanks not about that life like we have voices we need to practice using them so that we can make change and also just so we can enjoy ourselves yeah it's not fun to just be quiet in the corner face the wall sit down Mm -hmm. I don't want to live that kind of restricted life you know, or to be not- constantly tempering ourselves in an effort to appease everyone and to be yeah. liked by everyone and approved by everyone. I mean, the amount of years that I have wasted, just yeah. like, dear God, please make sure that I'm the good Christian girl that you require me to be. Like the amount of time and, and voice that I have wasted without yeah. even without knowing any better. I'm not hard on myself, but without yeah. knowing any better. But once you know, you know. Once you know... I- it's like, oh, I can never do that again. <laughs> it's, it's your responsibility now. Yeah. Once yeah, you know, it becomes your responsibility to yeah. use it. And so um, I am so grateful for you and for your voice in this world. I'm so grateful for your book. I'm uh-huh. so grateful for you getting up and setting your fucking timer for an hour <laughs> so that you can give us more words. I am so Thank grateful. You. It's not in vain it is not wasted um you you've changed at least one so thank you so much and and i really um i'm just inspired by you and grateful for the time thank you and and i'm grateful for you and i'm grateful for your community and when i need like a little shot of optimism and just like i need a little hope i just like go straight to your ig Ah, see see what see what you're up to 
And like, you know, I'm just seeing like all these comments and all these beautiful, it's so easy to give up without trying because you don't have to endure that feeling of failure. Like, yes, like all these amazing, intelligent, soulful comments. I think you've just made such a great community and I'm, I'm honored that you would invite me and I'm honored to sit with, with all of you. Thank you. The honor is ours. So much love to you and to words you. and wisdom as you dig deep and continue offering your voice to the world. Well, thank you for having me and I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you on the IG very soon. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Tara. Okay. Bye everyone. <laughs>